So with that, we are finishing our sermon series, uh, Dress to Kill. Over the past few weeks, we have uh, examined these spiritual weapons to defeat the enemy's schemes and attacks through the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. We have studied six out of the seven pieces of God's armor that equips us and provides protection for us as a church and as a believer. And we have learned through Paul the different pieces of God's armor as if he was dressing us up as an uh, a, a Roman soldier for battle. And uh, the first week we studied the belt of truth, which is the foundational uh, piece of armor, the word of God. Uh, we also uh, were able to share the breastplate of righteousness, which protects our heart and gives us the understanding of righteousness that we have from Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. We also were able to study the shoes of peace. When your feet are fitted with the gospel of peace, you're able to walk steady. You have protection because you can stand firm, believing and understanding and expecting that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because you are fitted and ready for battle. Amen? Then last week we had the shield of faith. Actually, uh, third week was the shield of faith where you can take any of the flaming arrows that the enemy has coming your way, you can bring up the shield of faith and extinguish these flaming arrows that the enemy may have. The helmet of salvation was shared last week with uh, Pastor Craig, who did an amazing job. Did you enjoy that message? Amen? I did. I did. And, and he shared the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. And we got a crazy pastor. He was walking around with a sword that was as tall as me. And it wasn't like this one right here. He had a sword that was just as tall as me. And I'm like, how? I, I just pray to God that he found a close parking spot near the church because he's walking around with that big sword. But, you know, it meant something that if we are equipped with the sword of the spirit and, and, and the word of God, that we can, we can extinguish we can, we can fight back with the word of God. It was amazing. See, as you can see, mine is not that big, but praise God for that. Now, this week, we are continuing with prayer. I want you to turn your Bibles over to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Amen? I'll give you a few seconds to get there. And as you do that, I will pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to be able to open your word. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would anoint my lips, Lord God, that you would touch me through the Holy Spirit, Father God, to deliver your message today, Lord God. We live by the word of God, Father God, and we just thank you, Father God, that it fills us, Lord God. Allow our ears to be attentive to your word and allow, it to, allow us to apply it, Father God, every day of our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breast plate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Can you say alert? Be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. We're coming to our last piece of weaponry. Verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Folks, we simply just cannot go into battle and position, and position ourselves for victory if we don't pray, okay? It's, it's, it's something that we have to get it right. And yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. God has already won. We are victorious in Jesus Christ because of his death, his resurrection. Yes, it is true. He, he, he gave his life for us. Our sins were forgiven, but we have now a responsibility as believers. Yes, it is finished. Yes, God has equipped us. God has equipped us with, with God's armor, but we're not, we're not done there because we can be equipped. We can be equipped, but if we don't pray, we're going to have a problem. Do you agree with me? 
we're going to have a problem. You can be skilled, you can be bold, you can be courageous, but when the enemy comes and wants to attack, and, and if you have spiritual conflict, and if you don't pray, you're going to have problems. Like I said, you can be properly equipped with all the equipment that God has given you, and if you don't pray, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. You can't be victorious if we don't pray. We can't. You can have it all together. But if you and I don't pray, we're not going to be victorious. We can try to have it all together in church with everything that happens in our church. But if we don't pray, we're not going to have it together. Because think about it. The Bible references prayer over 375 times. The importance of prayer, which means prayer is important. Paul is trying to tell us something in Ephesians chapter uh, verse 18. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. How often should we pray, folks? All the time. All the time on all occasions and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Paul is trying to tell us something here. The scriptures are trying to tell us something here, that we must pray all the time, that when we pray, we have to make it immediate. When you get a chance, you have to pray. You have to have uh, 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 the, 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 the freedom to drop what you're doing and start praying whenever you come into a situation because we have to take the opportunity to pray to equip ourselves because when the enemy attacks, folks, if you are not ready you're going to have problems. We have to seize every opportunity to pray, folks. Prayer is the most important weapon that we have. Amen? Amen. It is really, really important. We got to get this individually and as a church. We need to pray. We need to pray. And it's something that we possess, but we have a problem. We don't like to pray. It's the equipment that we least want to put on. Okay? It's the least equipment that we want to put on. And think about it. And God is not asking for a lot of prerequisites for you to pray. He's given us all the tools. You don't need a hotspot, a router, or Wi-Fi to pray. You can get on your knees and pray immediately. You don't have to look for other sources. You just can pray at any time and any opportunity that you have. You have to seize that opportunity, folks, to pray. Prayer is a must. Prayer is not optional, and it's the most ignored piece of equipment that we don't use, which is prayer, folks. And it's so important. Paul says that he's telling us, he's urging us that we should habitually, that we should continually pray in all the time. We need to pray all the time at every possible moment. The Word of God is telling us, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Folks, you have to understand something. The enemy wants us to be disconnected from prayer. He wants us to be disconnected from prayer. And we just can't disconnect ourselves because that's what he wants. That's what he wants. He wants to disconnect you and I and our church from prayer. Think about it. How many of us have smoke detectors in the house? How many of us have disconnected the smoke detector because it's beeping, 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 beeping? Okay? How many of us forget to put the battery back on? That's a problem. And spiritually, we do the same thing. We go a day without praying. Next thing you know, it's two days, and you forget to plug it back in. That's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants to disconnect us from prayer. You have to understand that. And we can't have it. It's a spiritual warning that you and I have to understand that without prayer, we can do nothing, folks. We have to be mindful. We have to be alert that when you're disconnected, folks, you have to understand that you got to plug back in. You have to plug back in. Pastor Craig shared an amazing message last week, and he had good news for us. The, uh, the helmet of salvation, that we're absolutely secure with our salvation in Jesus Christ. He also shared the sword of the Spirit, 
that, you know, we can come back and we can, we can stab the enemy back with the word of God. He had great news for us, but he also had bad news for us as well. That the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Get ready, get ready. He said, get ready, get ready. I got good news for you, but I also got bad news for you. He's coming. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Those three words. Think about those three words, folks. To kill. That means that you're depriving somebody of life. To steal. That means that you're taking something away from someone. And to destroy. That means that you're ending something. So think about those three words, to kill, steal, and destroy. He's coming. He wants to take possession of your life. He wants to take possession of my life. He wants to take possession of the churches. Folks, we got to be prayed up and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. We have to be praying at all times. We have to pay attention. We have to be mindful. We have to be alert. We can't disconnect ourselves. The enemy wants to disconnect you from your prayer life, from God, and that's an alarm that you cannot disconnect, folks. That is an alarm you cannot disconnect. It's your prayer life. It's your prayer life. Jude 1.20, but you, dear friends, build yourselves, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this question. What happens when you want to pray? Come on, somebody. What happens when you want to pray? What happens? Distractions. I like that word, distraction. What else happens? You feel tired. You feel tired. There you go. Come on. Lazy. Your mind's occupied. What else? What is it? Depressed. Depressed. Depression kicks in. That's right. What else? Busy. Busy. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. If you are a young parent and a couple, and what do you do? The first thing you got to do is, first thing you do is get up in the morning. You, you get your kids ready. You're in a rush, 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 rush. And we all live this life, folks. We're in a rush all the time, all the time, all the time. And next thing you know, I'm going to, you woke up at six in the morning, listen to this, you woke up at six in the morning and you're saying to yourself, or you're trying to program yourself that I'm going to pray at six o'clock in the evening. It ain't happening. And it's not happening. Folks, we have to make prayer a priority. And the enemy wants to distract us. And let me tell you another thing that the enemy wants to distract you. Do not substitute, do not substitute the word of God with your iPhone with listening to preachers and TV and all that stuff. Please, listen, listen. When I, was, when, I first got, when, I got, when I first got saved, I thought all these evangelists were my pastors. And I, and I would listen to them praying. That's great. That's great. God bless them. They're filling the churches. That, but listen, you need that one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, folks. Trust me when I tell you. You need that one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Nothing substitutes the Word of God. And your relationship with God should be number one. It shouldn't be TBN. It shouldn't be, uh, uh, what's the other, what's the other, uh, whatever it is. Don't let that be your devotional. Don't let that fill you up all day long and at six o'clock, you know, you're done. Folks, you can't do that. You cannot do that. See, when we pray, something happens, folks. Things start to happen. Things start to shake up. Things start to shift when we start to pray. The enemy becomes afraid that, you know, that the battery that Jesus has never dies. Think about it. The battery that Jesus has will never die because he's going to fill you. He's going to refill you. You don't have to put it on a charger. It's immediate. It's instant. You just got to get on your knees and pray. Amen? And then the enemy gets afraid and he gets shaken up because you're praying. But not only that you're praying, but you're praying in the Spirit. And when you pray and you pray in the Spirit, there's a big difference. We can prepare for battle because we're not only praying, but we're praying in the Spirit. And when we pray and pray in the Spirit, you and I have company. Amen? When you and I pray 
and we pray in the spirit, we have company. Romans 8, 26 through 27. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Verse 27, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit, listen to this, intercedes for the saints in according with God's will. Thank God. Can you say thank God? Thank God that he helps us when we are weak. That the Spirit of God helps us when we are weak. Folks, that means we have company. The Holy Spirit is our company when we pray and we pray in the Spirit. It helps us in our weakness, folks, because our flesh, we're weak when we're trying to do things on our own. The Spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. But thank God that we have a prayer partner. The Holy Spirit is your prayer partner. The Holy Spirit, it says, it says here, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, the Holy Spirit is our prayer partner. Are, are you with me? Are, are you with me this morning? The Holy Spirit is our prayer partner. So when you're weak, you will be strong because you have the Holy Spirit interceding for you. You and I have the Father interceding for us. We have the Holy Spirit interceding for us. You can have people in the church congregation praying for you and interceding for you. That's why we have prayer partners. We want to stand in the gap. We want to pray for you as well. But sometimes, folks, we want to do things on our own, and we just can't. We can't go to battle on our own. We can't fight this good fight on our own. We need the Holy Spirit because we are weak. We won't be able to do this by ourselves. We have a prayer partner that intercedes for us. And God has equipped us with the most powerful weapon, and that is prayer. We need to understand that that is prayer, that we are equipped with the biggest and the best weapon that you can ever think of, and that is prayer. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. So when you're going into battle, the Lord will fight for you and I. And these are the words that Moses was telling the Israelites when they had departed Egypt and Pharaoh was after them and in, and in pursuit. And they clearly understood that they were under attack. They clearly, they clearly understood that, that, that they, they were outnumbered. They clearly understood that Pharaoh was, 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 was uh, outraged. But they also understood that they also had weaknesses as well. They were battling for their lives, folks. And some of the Israelites were condemning, criticizing Moses. And some of them were praying at the same time. Some of them were crying out, what have you done? Let us go back. But I believe there was others that were praying. And because that fear, that, fear that, that, that came upon them, they were battling for their lives. I believe that many were brought to their knees and they prayed with, along with Moses and they were interceding that the Lord will fight for you. That's the instruction that Moses was giving them. And as you know, the story, think about what happened. God was instructing Moses with specific instructions. I want you to raise your staff and I want you to, to put, put it near the, near the ocean and the, the, the ocean's going to depart. Very difficult to believe. Nobody wanted to believe these things. The same things that are happening in your life, you may not want to believe what God is trying to do or what God is trying to instruct in your life. But this is what Moses said. Moses said um, uh, in verse 21, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with, with the wall of water on their right and on their left. Folks, what I'm trying to tell you is this. If we pray, God can do anything. If we pray, God can do anything. In my life, I wasn't looking for God to depart the ocean. January 21st of 2000. Drinking, 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 drinking. You guys know some of my testimony. And I believe that my wife was, 
who was serving the Lord at the time, was praying and interceding for her husband for months, standing in the gap praying. This is how powerful prayer is. This is how powerful the weapon of God is and the weapon of prayer. God wanted her husband to be covered in prayer. And I left a cruise. I was the best man on that wedding, but I considered myself the worst man in that wedding because I, I loved to party. I was out of control. But can I tell you something? When I got out of that cruise, I believe with my wife's prayers and everything that had taken place, I stepped out, I docked on, 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 on ground, and I said to my wife, I will never, ever have a drink in my life ever again. I had a problem. When you drank and when I drank and I come home for two days, you got a problem. When you're spending all your money, Drinking, hanging out, you got a problem. But that day, the Holy Spirit, without even going to church, anything, said to me, you will never, ever have another drink in your life again. Because something happens when you pray. Something happens when someone is praying. And when you're praying in the Spirit, something big is going to happen. Prayer moves everything. But we just can't talk about it. We just can't believe about it. You have to take the time to pray. Did you get that? We just can't talk about it. We just can't believe about it. We just have to take the time to pray. Amen? Amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Think about this. I don't know if you guys know that there's a movie coming out. Uh, Captain Sully, the guy that landed the plane on the Hudson River. It's called The Miracle on the Hudson. I want you to think about something. For that to happen, a lot of prayer had to go into that. A miracle had to happen. Scientists, the, the, the uh, FA, whatever it's called, that deals with the airlines and the planes, they, they could not believe what had happened. And keep in mind, I, I love planes. I just don't know all the codes, but I do know how to fly a plane. I can fly a Cessna plane. I've flown from, from, uh, from Hyde Park all the way to the Cape, and I've taken a trip solo. I've taken a trip solo from, from Norwood Airport, into, uh, Norwood, it's a small little airport in Norwood, uh, uh, all the way to New York City and back. Okay, so if you didn't guys didn't know, I am a, a pilot, a pilot on the computer. Amen? <laughs> I fly planes on the computer, okay? And I can, I, can I tell you something? It's so realistic. It's so realistic that you can put it on pause and go grab a cup of coffee and come back, okay? And my wife sometimes, I used to tell my wife, this is what I used to do on my spare time. I don't do it anymore. I haven't flown in a while. But I used to tell my wife, honey, come on, come on. Let me fly you down to the Cape. Let's go to Martha's Vineyard, you know, in my office with my plane. And she's like, you're sick. You're out of control. But let me tell you something. Listen, let me tell you. That's, I, I love planes. I love planes. But can I tell you something? Going back to the story, the miracle on the Hudson, something happened. When you pray, something happens. And I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that it was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who landed that plane at the Hudson River. I, I, I really believe it. And you know why I believe it? Because when they asked the captain, hey, captain, by any chance, were you uh, worried? Did you, did you pray or anything like that? And he goes, you know what his response was? I didn't pray, but I know there were some passages on that plane that were praying. Did you get that? When you pray, something happens. There were passengers on that plane. They were in that position when a plane is getting ready to, uh, to crash in the crash position. They weren't in the crash position. They were in the knee position. Praying, and I believe that that's why God, that's why God landed that plane on the Hudson River. The movie's coming out, I think, Friday. I'm going to go watch it. I'm a, I love planes. But anyways, amen? So when we pray, pray, when we pray, something happens. Prayer is vital to a believer. To, for you to be successful in, 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 in a battle, you're going to have to equip yourself with prayer. And, you know, you <laughs> You got to understand this, folks. Just listen. If you're a new believer, you got to understand this. It's not that difficult to pray. Listen to me. It is not that difficult to pray. I'm telling you right now. You're not going to need a PhD to pray. You're not going to need a theological degree to pray. I hope you don't need your pastor to pray because you need to pray with your heavenly father. And no disrespect to anybody, but that's, that's the main source. You got to go straight to the source. Because when you have a 911 situation, 
by, if you pray, by the time you dial your pastor's number or 911, get on your knees and stop praying. You don't need any fancy words. You don't need a hot spot. You don't need Wi-Fi. You just need to pray. And if you're a new believer in, in, in Christ, listen, it's real simple. Just have a conversation with the Lord and pray. You don't need a theological degree. You don't need fancy words. Because let me tell you, the greatest battles in your life, the greatest battles in your life are going to be won through prayer with Jesus Christ. The greatest battles are going to be won. And keep in mind that you can be suited up. And it's okay. You can suit yourself up. Because when you do suit yourself up with God's armor, that's having faith. But prayer is the one that will allow you to win the battle. Because you can have faith, but if you're not prayed up, you're not going to win the battle. Does that make sense? We studied the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of, faith, uh, of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Folks, and I shared in week two that these are not, listen to this, these are not seasonal weapons and tools where you can come in and you can store them in your closet like you do your sweater, your coat, your jacket, your, your, your winter coat, your scarf, your gloves, your hoodie. You, you can't store these things. You cannot, you cannot, and you cannot store these things. They need to be in the ready position. You need to be suited up every single day. The enemy is coming to kill, steal, and destroy your life. But thank God for the continuation of that scripture. But Jesus comes to give eternal life. Think about it. That scripture, we are kill, steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ comes to give eternal life. But we have to get it right. We can't take our tools and our weapons and store them up. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to take your stuff, your equipment, and store them. And when you store those things, you are storing your life, your children, everything. You are exposed for so many things. Because the enemy wants, to, wants you as a trophy. So when you store up your weapons and your tools, when you store them up, it's a trophy for the devil. He's, that's, that's his trophy. Because you're ex completely exposed. If I can have the, um, uh, the worship team come up. Just, 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 just Matt. And folks, I, I'm closing this intentionally with the message because we want to pray for you. We want our prayer partners to come up. We want to pray for you. And if you are a new believer in Christ, I want to call the prayer partners to come up. We want to pray for you. I preached a short mes message intentionally because God has given it to us all in the last three or four weeks. We don't need anything else. We need to be mindful. We need to be alert. You need to be Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that when you can stand, you stand against the devil's schemes. For your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints, folks. That should be your first cup of coffee in the morning. That should be as soon as, listen, as soon as you wake up, it should be the first thing that you do. Open up the Word of God. 
put on God's armor, even if you just do that just for a couple of minutes and just pray, because everybody has a different lifestyle here. Everybody's life is different. The Jenkins' family is different from my family. They have children. Our children are older. Your children are older. Everybody has a different lifestyle. But we all have one thing in common that we can do. And that is discipline. Listen to me. That is discipline. We have to discipline ourselves to pray. We have to discipline ourselves to put on the full armor of God so we can fight the good fight. Amen? If you can stand with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the last four weeks, Lord God, for your preaching, your teaching, Father God. Lord, we are full of your gospel, Father God. We thank you for the tools that you provided us, Lord God, that will protect us, that will guide us, Father God, that we can stand firm, Father God, fitted, Lord God, prepared in the ready position, Father God to know, Father God, that you go before us, Father God, that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper, Father God, because, Lord God, you love us, Lord God. You've equipped us, Lord God. You've left us some amazing tools, Father God. And, Lord, we're grateful for everything that you do, Lord God. But, Lord, you're calling your people, you're calling your church to prayer, Father God, because without prayer, Father God, we're nothing, Lord. And, Lord, we understand, Father God, about being disconnected, Father God. But, Lord, we thank God, Lord, that if we pray, we pray in the Spirit, we have company, Father God. You're our prayer partner, Father God. When we are weak, Lord, you make us strong, Lord God. When we're running on empty, Father God, you refuel us, Father God. There's a reservation in Jesus Christ, Lord. And we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you that we have a reserve in you, Father God, that we can cry out, Abba, Father, Lord God, instantly, Lord. We don't need anything else, Lord, but Abba, Father, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you're doing, Lord God. Lord, I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that there's people in this room, Father God, that want to pray, Lord God. Lord, nothing is intimidating, Father God, when we come to you, Father God, because you love us, Lord. And it's so simple, Lord. Simple things are duplicated, Lord God. Lord, you were so simple. You were so humble, Lord God, and that's what we're looking for, Lord. Just to be simple people who love you, who are full of your grace and full of your love, Lord God, and thankful for your mercy, Father God. And I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you for your humility, Lord God. Allow us to be humble, Lord God, in every area of our lives, Lord God, including ministry, Father God, including myself, Lord God. You oppose the proud, but you give grace to those who are humble. And Lord God, we want to be full of humility. We want to be full of prayer, Lord God. We want to become a praying church, Father God. We don't want to become the biggest church, Lord God, in the city, Father God. We want to become a well-equipped church, Lord God, where our families are healthy, Father God, where our children are healthy, Father God. We're proclaiming, we're believing, Father God, your goodness over this campus, over the West Campus as well, Father God. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We give you all the honor, all the glory, Father God, because you deserve it, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.